my life was divided in two parts as lives of all Ukrainians before the war and after the war. Before the war, I published one, only one book for children about running, which is my passion. And after the war, I started to learn uh, in the method writing school. And it was amazing and very powerful for me because the only weapon I have is my voice, my text and my language. So I could use it. And I think that we all authors are in a little army uh, which keeps moments for our generation and for future generations. And so our texts now especially are very important. My text for today is my poetry, uh, Mother's Victory. So I start, yes. <laughs> when my mother had cancer, which was eating away her brain, she came to me by train, motionless, mute, almost without memory. She couldn't even write down her name by her own hand with perfect manicure. She came motionless, but with manicure and with eyelashes painted with mascara and with hairdo. After the second chemotherapy, we all have been waiting when her hair would fall off, when we, will, when we would have to dress her with scarf turban in flowers that all women in cancer department wear. Do you know why it is a turban? Because a normal scarf slips out of a bald head, but my mom didn't lose a hair. After the second chemotherapy, still nearly motionless, still could not hold a spoon with a soup, she asked me if I could dye the roots of her hair in blonde so she doesn't stop being beautiful and to do her hair with a hair dryer. And for the first time in my life, I did my mom's hair. I did it slowly, a little worried, as everything that I do for the first time. As if I was preparing her for the beauty contest, as if I was paying for all those years when she was making my hair, when I was a child that had a long, magnificent hair. And then I started driving. It was my first winter driving, but because I was feeling a great responsibility for my mom, I stopped being scared. I brought my mom to Ola, to my master of manicure. We arrived early, we went to the cafe not far from Ola's place. We had a good coffee with an apple pie. I don't remember when was the last time I invited my mom for coffee with a pie, if not for the manicure. We wouldn't leave this one more moment. Her illness for me was the first war in my life. Very difficult war, unannounced war. Why in my life are all wars unannounced? It is always the same. There is a first explosion and I understand everything. I understand everything. I know how to put myself in someone else's shoes. I know how to listen silently without interrupting. Even then, I did not interrupt my brother when we received mom's diagnosis. I listened to him silently to the last words. I understood everything. I just hoped that it was a mistake, but it was not. We immediately said to our mom, we stand with you. We didn't express our deep concerns. We closed the sky over her head and pulled out our weapons, all that we had. In the war, the most important is not to be left alone with oneself and just trust those who are stronger, even if they are your children who logically cannot be stronger than parents. And the mom once again became mom, even more beautiful, even more tender. And that is why I wanted to say, when we are at war and you plant salads and sunflowers, when you teach children to draw Picasso paintings, remind them how to write because that is very important. When you wear red lipstick or even without your hair done, you take a photo of your smile, why not? When you sort cardboards and plastic, when you learn 10 words in Italian, when you open a bottle of wine from 2010, which you have found by accident in your basement, you allow yourself to live. Do not feel guilty for that. Feel anything, sadness, pain, happiness, anything, but not guilt. I think that our army is now there for that. And don't forget to pray. Even if you have never done it before, even if you wear a red lipstick with a perfect manicure, do as all of us when our mom was winning and finally won in that horrible war. <laughs> 